Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Fang Mei Luo from Tiffin University. I'm so glad to have this chance to share with everybody about social psychology. This class is designed mainly for Tiffin University students who is taking a social psych class. It's we call uh, Psych 250. Well, originally this is city class, but because of coronavirus, so now we switch to the online. So I'm making this video to share with my student and same time to share with the community. So if you are watching this and even you are not my student, welcome you as well. Okay, so actually this is part two of conformity. And last time in my part one, we talk about a lot, quite often, you know, when we are not sure something what's going on, but we want to make sure the the choice I make is correct or the answer I put in is correct, and I want to make sure it is right. I follow this something we call informational social inference. This is the first type of conformity. Then they have three place, three situation. Most likely, we are will follow this informational social inference. First is when the situation is ambiguous. Okay, so you are in the situation, you have no way to know what's going on. You more likely look around and see what's going on there. Okay, as I shared last time, I uh, say um, when I knew in this country because I'm not too good or even know what is football, how they play, what's mean winning. You know, when I went to the football, when I watch football, I pretty much have to follow whatever people do so I don't embarrass myself. Secondly, when you are in the crisis, okay? When you are in the crisis, usually um, you have no way to know you have no time to think about what to, what to do is right. So you pretty much follow what people do. And the third one is expert, right? So if somebody there and say, hey, I know what's going on, don't worry, then you pretty much follow. Okay, so this is some um, situation I'll let you look at and I'll be right back. Look at this when the situation is ambiguous. This say ambiguity is the most crucial variables for determining what people would do in the situation. Okay, so that is very um, crucial variable if you want to predict when people are going to use uh, informational social inference then ambiguity is an uh, important factor to take into consideration okay now here say uh, when we are unsure what is the correct response for example if you are um, in the in the place you're so new, you have no idea, and you want to make sure your response is appropriate, okay? So then you will see how other people do. Um, I think we say when you are in Rome, do what Roman do, right? So when you are in other country, to better follow what people in other country do, so you don't embarrass yourself, right? And then here say the more uncertain you are, the more you will rely on others more, right? So sometimes when you're in the place you are so sure, you are pretty much assertiveness yourself. But then you find yourself when you are in the new city, then uh, you rely on each other. I remember a couple of years ago, my husband and I, we went to uh, San Francisco and we, we tried to not use our, um, the people we know to guide us. So we went to the city, and you know what, we really hold our hand together. For so long, we didn't hold hand, you know, after marriage for many years. Hold hand is not really 
uh, usual behavior. But in that city, we really hold our hand together re re because what? We don't know what's going on in the city and we try to survive and then find a good spot. And actually in that time, even we have the car, we take train, we don't even know we can get in the bus. So we try to walk and you know, that is very hard. The city is very big, but good thing we finally realized we can use the bus. So actually it's getting better. But anyway, that's a good example about uh, the more you are not sure, the more you rely on others. Okay. Now here, also talk about uh, the, the crisis, right? So when you are in the crisis situation, usually we don't have time to think. So that is a, the um, place we will have to see what other people do. And um, so if, if you are in the place you are panic, you don't know, know what to do here, say it's only new nature we are looking for what people can guide us, right? Um, so, it's very interesting. They say, unfortunately, the people we uh, imitate may also feel scared. So sometimes you may follow the wrong crowd uh, when you're in this situation, but then, you know, you don't have much choice. Whatever you can get, it. you know, whatever they show, then whatever you can get, you get it. You know, you have no time to think about it's right or wrong, right? Okay. Then uh, that's more crisis and they say, for example, if you are taking airplane and then something goes wrong in that uh, the, the engine, then you don't know. So you pretty much have to check with flight attendants, see what are we doing now, when we're going to be okay. You know, you really rely on those flight attendants, right? Okay. Um, however, experts are not always reliable source of information. Right, we know nobody know nobody perfect. Even expert, sometimes they don't know the answer, you know. But then, what else you can rely, you know? Uh, so actually, the suggestion is if we have chance to learn more about stuff, so then when they, the the chance come, then you may at least you have some knowledge about something, right? Okay. Uh, and of course, that uh, information, social inference uh, is happen, you know, maybe in the situation the most when they are in uh, emergency, right? When you are emergency, that's why you call emergency, something happens suddenly and you don't know what to do. So if this time you see the expert uh, present, then, then you are that'll be the time you feel released, but sometimes you don't have experts, so then you just follow whatever people can do, right? Okay, so the next one will be second type of the uh, conformity, right? So everybody still remember the first type called informational what? Social inference, right? So the second one here called normative social inference normative social inference and we say a little bit in our part one right that the reason people have follow uh normative social inference mainly because they have a need to be acceptance the need to be acceptance and go back for the informational social inference they have the need to be accurate, the need to be accurate, and the, these have the need to be acceptance. Okay, uh, for example, why do some adolescents they engage in risky behavior? Why? I believe during that time they are very um, big rely on peer pressure to you know to build up their self esteem, self confidence. So actually, they really needed to be acceptance, right? Um, and so then sometimes you wonder why people, you know, in that age, what, what, you know, more often than adults or younger kids to risk and, uh, you know, risky behavior, okay? I think that because the, that is the, the, the time in our psychosocial or uh, psychosocial development, 
we really need to be able to identify ourselves. Unfortunately, a lot of time our identity comes from other people's approval, right? So that is uh, that is the reason. Okay. Um, now, so when we say need to be need to be accepted, there must be something there as a rule for you to feel you have to follow, and we call it a uh, social norms. We call it a uh, social norms. And social norms, what's the definition here? It's the implicit or explicit rule a group uh, has for the acceptable behavior, value, and belief of, of his members. Okay, the implicit or implicit rule, rules group has for the acceptable behaviors, values, and beliefs of its members okay so each group each society each community have their own rule you know sometimes you say it and you say it out loud and so everybody know but sometimes it's just there you don't really know um what what that mean if you not come from the community right and it's called social norm for example um i remember the first time first thanksgiving after I came to America, I got an invitation to go to Thanksgiving dinner. Thanksgiving dinner. And but actually I find the um the invitation actually the time is 3 p.m. Okay, and I'm kinda like, why they call dinner they are in p.m. Okay. And then um I think later people told me you always call Thanksgiving dinner. You don't go Thanksgiving lunch, right? You don't have the name, right? You call Thanksgiving as dinner, right? And so, um, if you want to have the meal, you can start early or can you can start late. But we all consider that's that's called, you know, Thanksgiving dinner, right? And so, each society have their own um, norms there. For example, in this country, hugging is very. Uh, uh, what do we say? It's norm, right? It's okay, especially when you're in the airport, you know, you say goodbye to the people you love and you hug each other. And give you a, a funny story. Uh, I remember when one time uh, my husband, you know, is, uh, we have to go overseas and we, we took him to the airport and we have to say goodbye, right? So we have been living in America for a while, so I'm kind of curious what kind of a goodbye I'm going to get, right? So we are a little bit, even we have been in America for a while, but we still very deep, our heart, we still in very Asian culture. So then uh, it's kind of embarrassed to hug each other. So I have three children. So the first one we sent out is our youngest one. That time he's still very young. So we say, hey, go to say, hug your father. So then he went to hug his, uh, my husband and say goodbye. So they hug each other. And then I had two teenagers. Okay, so two, two teenagers, how do they say goodbye to the father? My husband reached out the hand and say, take care of your mother. Okay. And then now it's mine. I'm the, I'm the one who should get a, a biggest hug, right? Well, my husband's there. I have two kids and I'm here. So do you know what I get? I get this. <laughs> so hi bye and then he walk away right so it's kind of like oh that is the way you say goodbye so when we in the car you know we are my, my two teenagers say hey it's unfair why he got a hugging we only got a shit and I say see what do I got I got this right so then my then my husband call coin you know so when i answer cell phone he say you know how's everybody i say we are fine but we are talk about our goodbye he say and then i describe he did not wear that's what how he did because that is something the culture my asian culture my still very strong in his head so he said oh wow i didn't wear this but anyway this will be your good teaching material well, yeah, for sure, because I have been saying that quite often. Now I tell you one more time, right? But anyway.
anyway, it's a it's a social norm. Depend on which which community you follow, but then you have that something in your mind when you do what, right? And so you want to be accept, you know, when you are uh, in 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 the community, right? So of course, when we say goodbye to American friends, then we more likely hug with them more than we hug our with, you know, yeah, hug our each ourselves, right? So that is because we want to be accepted. Okay. Okay. So um, here say we we human being are by nature we are social species, right? So we live in the society, right? And so uh, when we are interact with other peoples, we receive emotional support, affection, and love, and we partake in of enjoyable experience, right? And so because this, then of course, we want to be accepted, okay? So um, here the research show if people, they have been isolated for a while and they are actually, um, they will feel so um, deprived, you know, of human content is feel they are very stressful when they are not able to to interact with other people, they feel uh, stressful and they feel uh, traumatic. Okay, so think about the situation right now, right? It's coronavirus. So we were uh, uh, not, we were guided, right, by our governor uh, say stay home and keep distance, right? So this can be cause this situation. Okay, fortunately right now we have internet right and i'm making this video so you you still have somehow contact to other people so maybe it's it's easier to 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 overcome that 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 trauma right because people still out there you still can see and by the way uh our governor say you you still can go out take a walk you know walk your dog you know it is still a good way to do right it's not mean you have to hide your at home you know, they just say when you see other people instead of hugging each other, you may can wait, just like my husband. So my husband already practiced social distance for so long. So I don't think he's going, he, he, he won't feel uncomfortable for that. I think that's just him, right? Okay. Okay, so actually this is the um, definition for normative social inference, right? So the inference of other people that lead us to conform up, order to be liked and accepted by them, okay? And this type of conformity result in what? Remember last time we talked about private acceptance and public compliance. Remember that, right? And it's here. Remember this one that lead to public compliance with the group's belief and behaviors, but not necessarily private acceptance of the belief and behaviors. That means you are following other people, but you don't change your mind, right? That remember that part, but when you are private acceptance, that means you not only follow, actually you also believe that's the right way, and then you change your mind for that. Okay, and so uh, I think this is one more time. Okay, so hopefully if you don't see clear that time, you can see clear this time. Okay, um, read more, one more time just in case. Going along with what other people do in order to be liked and accepted by them, we probably conform with a group belief and behavior but do not always private acceptance accept them okay now maybe some of you know this research okay this research done by Solomon Ash okay in 1951 and 1956 okay his research is very simple he just draw three lines like there one two three you see three line there and then you see the standard line here Okay, so before we go further, I want you to look at this line, same as 
which line have the have the same length? One or two or three? Which one? Okay. You say, well, give me the ruler, then I can measure it. Well, the problem is you won't allow to get ruler. Okay, so you had to like use your eye to look at. Okay, just look at which one. How many of you think one? How many of you think two? How many of you think three? Okay. I think from my eye, maybe two. What do you think? Right? Okay. So the research is just like this. Okay. So when Ash asked uh, the participants to give, to give the answer, when they alone, when they alone, okay they are easy very more easier for them to make their mind and they will say well it's line two okay if that is the answer actually i'm not sure myself but actually just from the estimation i think maybe two what do you think okay but anyway so uh when they do research okay um you will have people say answer okay and then what do they do h will put some people out there inside the group we maybe we call undercover and give the wrong information okay we'll say well i don't think two is right actually from my angle supposed to be three or some people say supposed to be one so you have a uh, some undercover say something it's not necessarily true to confuse participants. Okay, now, because you cannot use a ruler to measure, so you don't really know what is really the right answer, right? Remember, if you are in this situation and you want people to accept, right? So you may be, those participants start to look around to see how they can trust those people uh, they give out the information of course they don't know that's wrong information they don't know that's undercover by researcher okay so what happened they say if they uh give the number of trial which uh participants confirmed okay so they find after those people give out the wrong information the first three times, you know, people more likely to show conformity. Conformity, see? They are more like here. Okay, the percentage get to 30, about 32, right? The first time when they start, no, when nobody, when they, nobody uh, confuse them, they, they, their uh, conformity is this level, okay? The more they, they, they hurt, a little bit uh, confused, right? But then if they keep going to try, 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 actually the conformity start to get less, okay? So actually you may kind of find the first few time is uh, uh, actually more vulnerable for the situation like this, right? And then the more uh, try, then you start to say, well, wait a minute, that person may be not right. So maybe you start to come out your own idea. But then the first few times, People are very vulnerable. And fortunately, a lot of things, a lot of time, people, things happen in the first few minutes, first few time uh, happen because, you know, situation like crisis or something, they won't really happen that often. So usually people maybe follow into this kind of form from conformity because that's the first few times try. Okay. So, These are classical normative reason for conformity. Why people follow. Okay, so this is the, the more classical reason why people follow. Okay, here say people know that what they are doing is wrong, but go along anyway, so as not to feel, uh, looks, feel like a fool. Right? 
particular or looks like a fool you know so quite often like for for, for the for age those participants they may not think it's really right but anyway they follow so people don't think they are st stupid or something right or sometimes if like this in contrary to informational social inference normality uh, pressure usually result in public complaints without private acceptance right so anyway I'm just like publicly follow you but I don't change my mind so it's just for fun okay everybody want to have fun okay let's have fun if you say that if you say so that's fine just do it and then you know when you left the place when you go home you 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 still back to your own you so you don't feel like cognitive distance remember last time we talked about cognitive distance that's mean you encounter something you want to believe but then you struggle with your own belief right so but then for this you 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 get a the mentality say i'm just pretending so it doesn't matter after this we back to the normal so who care right so that is a classical reason okay now why here talk about the go back to the age like judgment studies okay and so here after the uh research actually he tried many many times in 1957 and we know his research actually show the power of social disapproval in shaping a people's behavior right so it's really support that right even just judge the line but then that is very good setting to see how people you know try to follow other people because the social disapproval is very um, big for many people it's especially if you are in a group in a, a, a community you are so care then you won't really follow whatever people do right okay and interesting if you revise that research and then actually you have them answer in writing you have them answer in writing okay here say um originally maybe they they answer 12 out of 18 times wrong before but actually if you have them write it down then actually their their correction rate actually is higher because what because nobody know their answer so they more likely sincere write down the, the the answer they believe is true right so actually if you ask them to write down so actually sometimes when we do the in the meeting right we have to vote right if you have people you know rest with raise your hand they may be more like follow what for people like their good friend vote for this they better say yes the same way otherwise their friend look at them say i how can you disagree you should be agree right but if you have a people write down the answer in paper people will more likely write down the answer they wording they are you know they support the person they support for their voting right okay and so they say um if they are have them write down rather than say out loud conformity this this uh dropped dramatically only um occurring on an average of only 1.5 of the 12 trials okay so you can see so if you want to uh, get a, a better answer you you actually maybe have them write down rather than have them say out loud you get a more real answer for people real voice right okay you also interesting to find our brain actually also associate with this part of job so they say research is sure if participant they conform to the group wrong answer if they follow the wrong answer you use MRI to 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 detect what's going on you find the uh, brain activity they are response very fast or very arousal in the area of vision and perception 
Okay, they look at and they have to say the wrong answer. So the vision and perception part actually very active. Okay. However, when Python should give the right answer and disagree with the group, remember now you you decide I'm not going to conform. I'm going to stay whatever I believe is true in my heart. Then what happened when you do your MRI? You find actually the brain become active. Which part? Um, amygdala. Amygdala. Okay. This is the part actually devote for the negative emotion. So actually you are like, uh, right? I know I, I want to disagree, but I also care about them. So your emotion is very... Um, how to say, your emotion is very, uh, how to say, very active because you are like, uh, not sure you feel good because a metal is the one in devoted to the negative emotion. So you can see you are very uneasy in your in your emotion, okay? And then uh, also the uh, right coded nucleus, okay? That is an area devoted to the uh, social behavior modulating social behavior that part also very active that means people really feel uneasy so our brain actually know what are we doing right so if we are doing and saying uh it's different or our mindset and then what we try to do is different you see not not only uh your mind your brain also show that see is that interesting right Okay, so um, it's 30 minutes now, it's 31 minutes now. Um, I always try to hold my lecture in around 30, 30 minutes so I can get all your attention for the lecture. And so um, we have a informational social inference and we talk about normative inference, right? So uh, conformity. So then hopefully you find this lecture is helpful. Okay, so uh, I'll... I'll stop right now uh, for you have some break okay and we will come back for the part three uh, conformity okay and before i see you please stay healthy and stay safe and i see you next time and if you find this video is interesting and it's valuable they have a subscribe button in the in the button of your youtube channel you can subscribe if you are interested to do so and so uh, when I update my video, you will get notified. Okay, so I see you next time. Bye-bye.